What's the worst job you've ever had? I've had a variety of weird ones, from being a gopher at a hair salon, to a high school English teacher, to the job I have now, which is working as a full-time artist. All of these have had their ups and downs, but the worst job I ever had was my brief time working in food service. Quick note about the art for this video. Once again, I'm featuring more art from my recent Critical Role Campaign 3 merch set I've just finished. The finished pieces are available on my store as both stickers and keychains, with possibly more stuff coming soon, so check the link in the description to snag those for yourself. So now, pull up a chair, relax, maybe grab a sketchbook and draw along with me, and I'll spin you a yarn about my time in food service. Now, most of my stories are negative experience, so for the sake of keeping the company from coming down on me, I won't say the name of the place I worked at. But it rhymes with Bees Lake Phylactery. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, she worked in food service. This is going to be a bunch of stories about bad customers. Wrong! When I worked at the restaurant, I never actually interacted with customers. I guess I technically had a kitchen job, but I wasn't in the main kitchen. I was in the little bakery and coffee area at the front of the restaurant. My job title was Baker, which is hugely misleading, by the way. Let me be clear, there was no baking involved in this job. All the cakes the restaurant was famous for were made in a factory several states away, frozen, and then delivered to the restaurant in the mornings. Something about not wanting their recipes to be stolen or whatever. My actual job was to take the cakes out of the freezer, bring them to the front area to thaw them out, keep the cake display filled, occasionally make coffee drinks, and most importantly, plating cheesecake. Which sounds easy until orders are coming in faster than you can fill them, and most of your job is bend over, get a cheesecake slice out of the display, stand up, put slice on plate, bend over, get cheesecake, stand up, put on plate, bend over, stand up, 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 bend over, stand up. Hundreds of times per shift. Needless to say, it was very, uh, physically taxing. It wasn't all bad, though. Some of the cakes required extra decorating once they were actually on the plates, and my favorite was a s'mores-flavored one that evolved using a blowtorch and lighting the toppings on fire. That's right, baby, I am blowtorch certified, watch out! But the job didn't pay very well, and I was mostly there trying to save whatever money I could while trying to find a better job. See, I started working there right after I graduated college. I had just gotten my degree from art school and unfortunately hadn't been able to secure a job at an animation studio. I was feeling the post-college depression hard. I remember the first closing shift I worked, I was mopping chocolate and cheesecake particulates off the floor and just started crying because I had the thought, what if this is it? What if this is my job for the rest of my life? What if I never actually get to do what I just finished going to school for for four years? It was rough. I managed to hide my tears from my trainer, but that would not be the last time I cried at that job. I was in a very bad place. Thankfully, I only worked there for about a half a year before finding an actual art-related job, but I do have plenty of wacky stories from my very limited time there. The first thing I'll talk about were the uniforms, which were stupid. Tell me, when you're working in food service and dealing with very messy foods that stain easily, what color do you think is the least reasonable to have your employees wearing? Did you guess white? Good! That's correct! White is a very poor choice for a kitchen uniform color. Now guess what color our uniforms were? Solid white. The servers wore a white shirt and black pants, but the people who actually did the most work around food had to wear a white polo, a white apron, and white pants. And a maroon hat with the company logo on it, but it didn't, white except for that. The shirts were provided by the company, since they had the logo embroidered on them, but we had to buy the pants ourselves. Thankfully, I got hired in spring, and so white pants were fairly easy to find, given it was around Easter, but sheesh! Why can't they just let us wear black pants that won't show chocolate stains? No, we gotta wear white and pray that we don't get a huge stain on our clothes in the middle of a shift. 
I went through multiple aprons every shift from wiping cheesecake remnants on them constantly, and I had to bleach treat my uniform after pretty much every shift. Years later, I still have those pants and wear them almost exclusively for cosplays. The one positive about food service, never having to buy white pants ever again. Silver linings, I guess. Now, another part of the uniform was the shoes, which, surprise surprise, also had to be white. Now, I have large feet for a lady, and shoe shopping is already stressful enough. I have definitely cried while shoe shopping for weddings before. But combine that with the fact that I had to find solid white, slip-resistant shoes in a size that actually fit me, and didn't have time to order them online because I needed them for a shift in two days. It was hell. I swear, we went to every shoe store within 20 miles of my house trying to find anything that would meet the requirements. I have never felt closer to hell in my life. Thankfully, I did eventually find appropriate shoes, and per regulation, they had deep grooves on the bottom to make them slip-resistant when walking on potentially slippery kitchen floors. You will notice that I said slip-resistant, not slip-proof, because like it or not, you can still bust your butt wearing slip-resistant shoes, and I found that out the hard way. Cut to a particularly busy day, there was a pretty big crowd of people in the front lobby area watching us go through the motions and waiting on their cakes and to-go orders. I'm minding my own business, going through the usual get cake out of display, put cake on plate, and repeat 30 times per minute routine. And this shift had been an especially messy one, multiple slices of cake getting dropped on the floor, and we hadn't been able to clean the floors on account of how busy we were. The handful of us behind the counter were just trying to avoid stepping on any of the biggest messes while trying to get a manager to the front to pick up some slack so we could clean up. And then it happened. I had just set a slice of cake down on the plate, plating knife still in hand, and I was turning around to get another. One of the other employees shouted, can someone pass me the chocolate bottle? And I happened to be the closest to it. I grabbed the bottle off the counter next to me, turned to hand it off, and slipped. It felt like the fall took a good 10 seconds of feeling my feet sliding out from under me and feeling them leave the ground as I looked up and watched the ceiling slowly get further and further away. And then just like that, boom! I landed hard on my hip, accompanied by the ooze of the audience who watched me just disappear behind the counter. It must have been pretty funny from their point of view, but it was less funny from mine. All things considered, it could have been a lot worse. I literally had a seven inch long serrated knife in my hand, and if I had fallen forward instead of backward, I could have easily impaled myself with it, but... Luckily, all that was hurt was my hip and my pride. Nothing was broken, just bruised. But we definitely cleaned the floor really fast after that. <laughs> now, I know I said earlier that I never interacted with customers, but the truth is there was exactly one time when I did, and it was an accident. I was walking through the restaurant and going to get something from the back, and a woman sitting at a table stopped me thinking I was a waiter and asked me to bring her lemon slices for her water. I could have just said that I wasn't a waiter, I was just kitchen staff, but I didn't want to risk pissing off a customer and losing a server their tip, so I gave my best customer service smile and said, sure, one second, and booked it back into the kitchen. The restaurant was pretty big, so I didn't know all the waiters by name. I had no idea who was actually supposed to be helping these people. I didn't know how the tables were numbered. I didn't even know where we kept the lemon slices or that we even had those. I felt like Spongebob in that one episode where he threw out everything in his brain and then didn't know his name, because if I wasn't in the bakery, I didn't know about it. Not my department. I just awkwardly puttered around the food pickup line looking for someone who wasn't too busy and frantically asked where the lemon slices were. I limited my time walking through the restaurant after that, out of fear of being asked for lemons. Ugh. Now, all of these stories so far have been pretty mild because, of course, I'm saving the best for last. As the newbie, I was usually the person who did cake inventory at the start of my evening shift. This was basically going to the huge freezer at the back of the restaurant, taking out cakes, unwrapping them, and carrying them up to the bakery section. And these cakes were heavy, like 30-pound frozen bricks, each sitting on top of a two-pound metal serving tray and carrying them across the restaurant with one in each hand, and it was a horrible cheesecake-related concussion waiting to happen. 
Thankfully, I never dropped a cake on a customer, but I definitely had nightmares about it. Now, it was important that I get the cakes out of the freezer at the start of my shift because they took about three hours to thaw out. I remember a time where we didn't have enough thawed out cake slices and ended up speed thawing some with the milk foamer on the espresso machine. Just blasting hot air on a cake slice until it thawed out enough to give to a customer. My coworkers and I swore we'd never tell a manager what we had done. And now I'm telling all of YouTube. Good thing I don't work there anymore. I quit eight years ago. What are they gonna do, fire me? Anyway, being the cheesecake getter meant I spent a lot of time in the freezer. It was a huge metal room with extra thick insulated walls and doors to keep the cold from getting out. You know, standard restaurant freezer fare. The only way in and out was the one door, and there was no cell service, so if you got locked in there, you were basically trapped until someone came and rescued you. And you're never gonna guess what happened. Towards the end of my time working there, the little push handle on the inside of the door started acting up. At one point, I was in the freezer, grabbing some cakes, the door behind me closed, I went to open it, and... Ka-chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, chunk No matter how hard I pressed the handle, the door wouldn't open. I spent a few minutes trying to push it open with my hands, even pushing all of my weight into shoulder checking the handle. No dice. Starting to get chilly and frantic, I grabbed my phone and tried to call the main line for the restaurant to get someone to come save me. But also no dice there, my calls wouldn't go through because of course it wouldn't. There was a small window in the door and the kitchen was nearby, so I started banging on the door and yelling for someone to let me out. But the kitchen was too loud to hear my calls for help, and no one passed by the window to see me. For a few minutes, I started thinking that maybe I would just freeze to death in this tiny frozen cell before anyone came and found me. But fortunately for me, I'm ornery and stubborn as hell, and decided that dying in the freezer of a mediocre restaurant was not how my short life was going to end. The push handle on the door was stuck, meaning it couldn't be pushed in enough to actually unlock the mechanism and open the door. Pushing on it with my hands and throwing my shoulder into it hadn't been enough, but if I could put some more force behind it, I might be able to get it unlatched. My arms may be weak and noodly artist arms, but I've always had pretty muscular legs. So I gathered all of my strength and summoned energy from the universe and the cold-ass freezer to give me the strength to FBI kick the door down. I raised my leg and kicked my non-slip shoes into the door handle and wham! The door slammed open, swinging open so hard it hit the wall behind the freezer with this explosion of sound. And I had just enough time to think, yay, I'm free, before one of the kitchen staff came over and started yelling at me. He had apparently just been about to walk in front of the door when I kick slammed it open and he just barely managed to dodge getting whacked by it. I tried to explain that I was just trying to get the door open, but he wasn't having it. I ended up talking to a manager later and telling her what happened, and her response was, Oh yeah, that door gets stuck sometimes, don't worry about it. What? Th that's it? Don't worry about it? I could have frozen to death and I almost concussed a coworker trying to get myself out and all you have to say is don't worry about it? <sighs> This would happen to me two more times before I quit. About six months after starting at Bee's Lake Phylactery, I was finally able to land a new job that was actually art-focused, and I haven't worked in food service or been locked in a freezer ever since. But at my new job, I did get to watch a building burn down, but that's another story. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the food service tales. Again, the art I drew during this video is up on my store now, and there's a link in the description if you'd like to grab it for yourself. I've got a few more videos waiting in the wings, so make sure to subscribe so you can see when those go up, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye!